Welcome to the Data Center Hawk podcast. Today we're talking about Q4 2020 wrap up, talking about some of the highlights we saw in the quarter with the great David Liggett, the pontiff of prognostication in the data center industry. Yes. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this channel. Make sure you get alerted anytime we post new content. Uh, and we're jumping in next. <laughs> David, welcome to 2021. It's very good to, excited. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yes, Happy sir. New Year to you and yours even New Year's and seems all like, those that listen. Yes. yes, even New Year seems like many, many moons ago. It does. But it's been a, you've been busy. We, I've been we all have been waiting for you to finish Insight and then I can <laughs> <laughs> start doing my work. Uh, all right, so I think, you know, podcast today, just talk about really Q4. Yeah. You know, some of the key a takeaways there. It's yes, kind of a, a wrap, wrap up. up. Yes. Yeah, that's a good word for a it. A wrap up and a look forward. A wrap up. Yeah, okay. How you and then, you know, I would say even to to summarize the year of 2020 as a whole would be very helpful. Yes. All right. So let's just st start with it. You know, so give me like your top headlines from yes. Q4 of 2020. Yeah. Uh, the market demand, I think, finished strong, you know, wasn't as strong as some of the other quarters, but I don't, none of us really expected it to be. And it put a end on one of the most unique years I think we'll probably look back on ever as it relates to, you know, just anyone in business or anyone like uh, personally. Um, and, you know, my takeaway for the data center industry in 2020 was, you know, it was really like unexpected challenges led to almost, it led to record year uh, as it relates to demand and some of the uh, ways that the industry changed so, you know, I, I certainly don't want to say that the, the pandemic has not been hard uh, on people in our industry or people in our space, but I think it's created opportunities that have grown the market. Yeah, I think I think a lot of these companies, I mean, they're really up for the challenge. Yeah. And it was a challenge, but and, and many certainly met that challenge with flying colors. Yeah. And I, the you know, when I mean, I think the way we look at the market and maybe people that are listening as well, you know, we we're paying attention to what's happening with demand in US and European markets. We're looking at how supply is changing, you know, so how uh, data center operators are choosing to not only uh, acquire land, uh, build, and then lease the, that infrastructure to other people, but also like the deal structure and how that's playing out. And that's, they have gotten, you know, more creative and more thoughtful on how to do that and really trying to like listen to what the customer it needs and what and how to meet those needs over time. And I think if there's anything that the pandemic taught us, it was that those needs are changing. And, you know, the the data center operators did a good job of listening to those needs and, and figuring out ways to meet them. And, you know, I think the interesting thing we'll talk about a little bit is I, I, I believe that 2021 will be another strong data center year from a demand and supply perspective. So. Yeah, so no big pullback. Yeah, I don't you know, maybe not a match for right. 2020, but you're not seeing a, a huge pullback. Right. I don't think so. Uh, we can talk about it, you know, a little bit later, but I I really feel like there's still some really good signs taking place. Yeah. But how the market will grow. Yeah. So talk about, again, just a couple of the, you know, you touched on a couple of things about deal type yes. or deal structure. Yeah. Um, we'll get into that, I think, more detail later, but just the, the, the come of the, some of the top headlines, you know, I think we saw. You know, several markets had their certainly their strongest quarter in a long time, if yeah. not ever. Um, you know, across North America, you know, we haven't been tracking Europe as long, but I yeah. think you could probably say that similarly. Um, yes. You know, for some of those markets as well. So yeah, let me yeah. give you so yeah. So I'll let me break some highlights from each individual market down. I mean, one is uh, Northern Virginia. You know, that market now is doing like fifty to seventy megs a quarter, like average, pretty you consistently. Know? Yeah. So I think like this is, again, top of my head, but like first quarter was like. 60 or 70 megs of absorption. Second quarter was like 150. Third was 80 or 90. And then the fourth was like in the 50s or 60s. So, um, you know, to put it into context, like eight years ago, we would go, hey, how much demand happened in Northern Virginia in 2013? 48 megawatts. Oh my gosh, what a year. We're doing that on a quarterly basis now. So that's how it's changed. So that's, that's one thing in Northern Virginia, you know, I think that's gonna continue. Um, yeah, I would say if you have your uh, data center bingo out, you know, you will say you've hear the term lumpy a lot. 
Yes. It is still true in that, you know, some of those big quarters were still the result of one or two really big deals. Yeah. But those are happening with enough frequency now that if you look at the market as a whole, yeah. it's not as lumpy. Sure. You know, you, you know, and so that I think is an interesting it's point. It's like the, not as lumpy. Yes. If you, if you, My you know those little deals you had when you were a kid and it had a little pen and you put it in a little gear and you make a little circle. Yes. You know, and it, the first time it'd be like spike. Drop a spike, drop. But you did enough times, yeah. you could have a little circle, like a nice yeah. little uniform circle. Yeah. That's what I feel like is going on with the markets. It used to be like eh, up yeah, down. Sure. And now it's like all the ups and downs have started to balance yeah. out, and so that you've seen almost like a consistency of pretty significant demand quarter by quarter. Yeah, and the the one thing I think we've tried to do, and 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 most people in the market are trying to help uh, people understand that just because there might not be that huge level of demand doesn't mean there's a huge, a big fall off in the way these companies are, are approaching the market. Um, and, and that's, you know, I think some people that are maybe on the, on the outside of the market looking in that, that dabble in it a bit, maybe make those assumptions when they see that. I think those of us that are in it neck deep, like we are and others, you know, realize that like, this is part of how, how things go. Uh, so, so that's Northern Virginia. Uh, you know, it was really interesting to watch Northern New Jersey this year. I mean, there was, a, I think, resurgence from financial firms that were looking to either right size IT infrastructure or, you know, a lot of the commitments that they made were like in, you know, 20, uh, 2010, 2011, 2012. And so some of those are coming due. So you're starting to see some of that. But Northern New Jersey had, you know, a, a, a stronger year than normal. Um, uh, n never wanting to let a good uh, crisis go to waste, the government Im immediately right. uh, <laughs> floated a tax on all uh, data center transactions. Yeah, sure. So, you way know, to go, North Hopefully they can figure that out because that just, <laughs> you know, I think all of us, you know, just scratching our heads at that one. But, um, you know, uh, Dallas had some, you know, decent absorption in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, it's an interesting market. There's some dynamics here that um, make larger companies – struggle with putting, you know, larger f f big footprints here. But um, there's some, I think, good things happening uh, here. So uh, Atlanta, you know, saw some decent demand. So when you, when you factor that all out, Northern California, you go, hey, decent fourth quarter uh, from a demand standpoint. Um, and that, you know, and that continues with a trend that we called out last quarter of, of, of some of the demand starting to spread. Uh, out of that Northern Virginia epicenter. Yes, again, that's which right. Which is great. And I think we that's all right. think that's that's healthy. Yes. And hopefully continues. And it marks the maturity of the cloud providers wanting to ensure that they can meet, you know, th there's certain business requirements that are pushing those companies to smaller markets or more strategic markets. So they'll pay higher costs somewhat uh, to get those deals done. And there's some st strategy going on about how close those requirements are to one another, et cetera. And I think that's that will mark 2021 as well. You'll see that happen. Chicago is really the story of the fourth quarter, in my opinion. Uh, finally starting to see some bigger cloud uh, hyperscale requirements there. Some other enterprise deals take place. And so that was really a uh, new, uh, uh, that's probably a new, like, something that we didn't i didn't think would happen as quickly as it did there's been some changes in that market tax incentives actually you can get on our website uh we just released a blog on our site uh that you know talks about why chicago is seeing increased growth you know the tax incentive thing you have uh, illinois last year changed tax incentives for data center uh, 2019 requirements yes. it yes. feels like 2020 yes. so um, long year. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> that's a whole podcast. Why was 2020 so long? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then just the competitive market in Chicago. I mean, it's like if you take Chicago, you know, Dallas, Phoenix, Northern Virginia, Northern California, Atlanta, those, you know, kind of six markets. I mean, you just have like the best data center operators with the best facilities they can build small they can build big i mean it's just it's very mature from a, a competitive standpoint so um all that together fourth quarter was uh you know decent really decent quarter for the industry and and i would say there's some really interesting things taking place in the first quarter too yeah i think you know you mentioned chicago i think in addition to the fact that it had a great quarter of leasing it was still primarily driven by just one large cloud service provider so i think sure. it'll be interesting to watch if others sort of follow suit yes in that regard agree so keep your eye on Chi-Town. 
Uh, you know, and hey, talk a little bit about uh, on the European side. You know, we've yes. got, I think, Man, a okay. handful of reps yes. in that market yet. So I'm really excited about what we're doing in Europe. So a couple of quick things. One, you know, we for the last like two years have been tracking the major markets in Europe. Flap D, everybody that listens, you know this, but Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, Paris, and Dublin. And we track multi-tenant data center spaces. It's really important. There's, uh, there is um, development taking place in some of those markets where the very biggest data center users in the world will actually go out, they will buy land themselves, they will own and they will operate that. So that's a certain supply amount that is different than the supply amount that, that we're tracking when we look at our specific numbers. So um, so I just think that's something I would like to say to everyone. And one of the interesting things you mentioned is to me is that, you know, if you listen to the some of the large publicly traded REITs quarterly earnings reports, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, you would have heard that a lot of them have announced like, hey, they're they're really shifting their focus to Europe. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you don't want to listen to those, you can just listen to our summaries because we listen to them. Our team That's right. pulls out all the very right. helpful nuggets, I mean, we are, distills them sure. in to uh, usable, actionable information. Yeah, no, so, no, so, but that is a, I think we're seeing that. Yeah. So yeah. activity is happening in Europe for sure. Those five markets. We've also added another eight uh, markets as well that are, you know, more secondary in nature, but you're starting to see some bigger activity there. Uh, but, but all that to say, I think, you know, what sticks out to me in 2020 is the continued growth in a market like Frankfurt. You know, this is like, obviously, one of the financial um, capitals in Europe. You know, when you really think of that, you probably think of like London and Frankfurt. Um, and those companies, you know, continue to grow. Cloud service providers in those markets continue to grow. Uh, the ability to get control of a site, uh, work through the permitting process, bring that power online it, over a period of time takes a, takes a while. And so uh, so the data center uh, developments over there are um, harder to come by. So when there is, you know, when you have a pathway to 10, 20, 40 megawatts and can show some of those bigger users that, um, that is a really attractive story. And that's driven a lot of pre-leasing. So, um, that has taken place. I'm really, I, I think 2021 will be like a continued record year over there. Europe is an interesting continent. <laughs> How many times have I said that? That's, that's well, if you look, right yes, there. but if, if you just were to look at the size of the markets, you know, it's London is largest. Yes. And so you would be just inclined, to, the knee jerk would be like, oh, that's the Northern Virginia of Europe. Right. But I don't know that that's it's necessarily different. true. It's different. Yeah, it's very different. Whereas, Frank, you know, they've got some, some I think, land constraints there, maybe yeah. some power constraints there where it doesn't feel the same way in Frankfurt. So they're well, probably poised to 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 not overtake, but but certainly challenge for preeminence in that. Yeah. That continent. And all these I mean, you know, I mean, when you like break down the basics of what's happening here is it, it is a this is a push for infrastructure. Right. And so if you think about how infrastructure like and what say that I mean, like power connectivity, and the maturity of that and the availability of that in these markets. So, um, you know, these areas that were built, you know, hundreds of years before the U.S., you know, thousands of years before, like have different um, infrastructure challenges than, you know, areas that are newer. And so you're, you see that with what's, what's happening. You know, you see that with the way that uh, different where buildings are built, how the, how the power supply is laid out, the infrastructure is laid out. And I think that's you know, some of the challenges related to that uh, are experienced in markets, you know, in Europe that might be older um, and, and, you know, might have less power available. And I would say this, there's some markets in the U.S. that are starting to have less power available. Mm. You know, there's some power issues taking place right now in Northern California. Uh, there's some power issues taking place in areas in Chicago. And when I say power issues, I just mean you got five different data center operators that are trying to plan 40 or 50 megawatt projects and there ain't that much power there so you know so you've got to figure out over a period of time how that will happen now just because a, a company is planning to do a project doesn't mean it's going to happen um but you know it, what it shows you is you know those those companies are driven by like end user relationships so you got end users that are telling them hey we want to be here we want to be here we want to be here can you get there and so that's where they're trying to position themselves to win those deals. Yeah, and that goes, I think, underscores like the challenge of just getting a data center online. It seems we just report oh, 100 megs here, 50 megs there, 40 megs there. Sure. It almost seems like we take for granted the large amount of work that goes into 
literally just bringing one online. You have to have probably long, long years of planning on yeah. the power side, on the fiber side, on the land side, et cetera, et cetera. And so that you, by the time you get to the point where you're actually like, you know, yeah. digging dirt, that you know, a lot of the work has been done. Yeah. A, lot the, a lot of the hurdles have been crossed. So you're trying to give a shout out to like the operations team right now. You know, you're saying yeah, yeah, they need some love. They need <laughs> some love. <laughs> no, it, you're right. I mean, there is a ton of work taking place. And I think, you know, and then we can move on, but it's like highlighting because the, because the market's gotten so much larger and we are talking about 20 megawatt project, 50 megawatt project, 100 megawatt project. It's just, it's, it's changed, you know, five, t five years ago, seven years ago, it was talking about, you know, 10 megawatt projects. So, uh, I'm in agreement and way to go all planning teams that are out there. Yes. You guys rock. All right. This I podcast want, is for you. Yes. Let's, I want to, return back to you talk about frankfurt talk you know again if people aren't aware yes from all of our you know vast library of previous podcasts why is frankfurt attractive and why are they able to grow more quickly than say like a london or a you know well, Amsterdam yeah. or a paris I yeah i think there's just been more of a focus in that market in the last two or three years maybe than there has in the past so uh and so there's companies that have worked out some of the challenges and 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 you know have shown a pathway to growth from a power perspective uh, it's also like highly connected um so i you know I, I don't think it's like a uh it's other markets aren't performing i think it's that you know that market has had more of a focus by those providers and they've just been able to show how you can grow there you know what they're doing in frankfurt there uh, the crack and necks and cash and checks. Uh, there we go. I'm not sure where that was going, but yes. They I like are. to keep you on your toes, David. I appreciate that. All right, again, once again, I would like to make sure we're getting our uh, data center bingo card filled out. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about like what the hyperscalers are doing, um, you know, across the U.S. and Europe. Yeah. Uh, well, they're doing a lot, and it's reflective in you know the demand. That's a, that's a tweet right there, David Liggett <laughs> on hyperscalers. Quote: They're, they're doing, doing a lot. lot. End quote. Um, you know, I think one thing is they've got big requirements that are going in like major markets. So sure. uh, that's that's Tell happening. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, two, there's certainly a uh, a product that is being sh put in the market that is like on the smaller side, like one to four to five megawatt requirements and multiple of those in a market mm. that is typically serving like a, a business requirement that they have. Uh, you know, we have seen that they will actually get uh, business requirements with a customer specifically and then have to put that in a market because it doesn't fit within their bigger plan. So that's another thing we've seen. We've seen Powered Shell development take place where they're taking those bigger requirements. They're not actually doing the leasing of the turnkey data center facility, but they're leasing a Powered Shell where they pay a less, um, a more where they pay a cheaper rate to lease the building mm -hmm. and then they bring the infrastructure in themselves. We're seeing a push to secondary markets in Europe. So, you know, um, Mil Milan, Berlin, um, the Nordics, I mean, markets like that, that, you know, are smaller, like they just don't have the maturity that some of these, that we mentioned London, Frankfurt mm -hmm. have, but they have the need. And so those companies are trying to get more mature in a number of those markets. So those are some of the things that we're seeing, but that's keeping everybody very busy on how to help serve those, you know, requirements moving forward. And, and those hyperscale companies have shown that they will, um, they will, it's not like they just have one company that they partner with. They're partnering with multiple companies in multiple markets. Yeah. You touched on like the powered shell piece. And I think that's another trend we're seeing is just the, the creativity yes. that some of these data center operators yes. have shown in, in, in getting to market. Like yep. we talked about before, just the, on one extreme yep. is, you know, We've got 100 megawatts planned, yep. which is basically nothing. On the other hand, we have fully turnkey right. data center. We have 100 megawatts right. just sitting there. Yep. You could move in today, and so and and in all in between, you know, they're starting to fill in some of those gaps. We're almost like if you're a big customer, you can like kind of like pick where yeah. on the development timeline you want to insert yourself and sure. then go there. Yeah, this so, yeah, it has to do with you know timing, like how quickly can you get the, you know, how under the gun are you from a requirement perspective and needing to get the capacity to the market? That's one thing too. I mean, it really has to do with moving money around. And I don't mean like, I, I mean, how a company wants to spend their capital, right? If you are a company that um, would rather, you know, uh, hold your capital back and pay it over a period of time, then finding those turnkey data center opportunities are, 
you know that's the way to do it the 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 uh, the the turnkey like build to suit deals us uh, have uh, gotten more efficient and at times more stripped down. So I think one thing like we've seen in our space in the last five ten years is a compression of rates, mm. and you know that's a hard thing for people in the real estate business to get their arms around because you see a market that's growing and demand is up, but the rates, rates have are been, down. Yes, yeah, so and a lot of guys are just like does not compete. Right. And a lot of it has to do with the fact this is such a young industry. You know, the reason, one of the reasons the rate were so high 10 years ago is because like, there were like two data center operators in some of these markets. So there wasn't a lot of competition and the product was much more, um, you know, it was, it was the product today is much, it's scaled down. It's mm -hmm. more efficient. Uh, they've gotten better. I mean, it, you know, so, so it's a different day today. So just to say like what it was in 2010 to where it is in 2021, it's really not a great comparison unless you dig into the details of why on the rate side of things. But, you know, that powered shell uh, path, uh, you know, gets you to the market faster. It allows you as a company to more control, more flexibility. Uh, and if it serves the purpose for what you need, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a good solution. And we're seeing that take place, you know, the market, I'll quiz you. What do you think the market is you, we've seen the most of that in? Oh, man, knee jerk, Northern Virginia. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, you certainly have seen <laughs> that. Thank you. But starting to see it in Chicago, mm -hmm. um, you know, starting to there's there's been some things like in Dallas for a while, but it's because some of the providers that are here, uh, you know, I think you'll see some of that maybe in like Northern California. So keep your eye out. The powered shell, it returns, which is also featured in our blog that we released. Yes, so just gosh, another you, shameless plug it's not for that. Shameless at all. Datacenterhawk.com backslash blog. Backslash blog. Okay, so looking forward to 2021. I mean, yes. I think you said you expect it to be a strong year. Let I me mean, just maybe put a little bit more meat on that as far as hey, where where do you expect growth to occur? Maybe, you know, different trends in the yeah. leasing that we expect to continue to develop. Yeah. I was talking to um, someone the other day that mentioned that they had had a conversation with a contractor that was building you know, some of the data centers that are out there. And one of the things that the contractor said, which I thought was interesting, was this is the year of the big deals. Like 2021 will be the year of the big, big deals. So interesting. one, you would think back, yeah, what was 2020? Yeah, what so was 2020, chop liver? Sure. Yeah, so that, that's, <laughs> one, megawatt deals. Yeah, that's one, one side of it. But I, what, the point that that person was making was, you know, for a certain amount of companies, we have seen a them getting more and more comfortable taking down bigger requirements of space. If you don't track the industry, it's really important to know this. We're not, this is not 50 companies we're talking about. We're talking about probably 10 to 20. Mm. And, and so as those 10 to 20 grow, you know, their, their takedowns have been, you know, over a period of time, like four and a half megawatts, nine megawatts, 18 megawatts, 36 megawatts. And now we're starting to see like some commitments in like the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And so that's a lot, you know, as you mentioned before, you know, a lot of times the big absorption can be in a few deals. Well, that's one of the reasons why. Uh, so I would say 2021, watch out for that is some of those bigger, you know, bigger deals that could get even lumpier. So that's one thing I would, you know, I think it's really important. I think there is a push for sure for companies to have a global offering you know, because this has become such a international business. I mean, if you serve customers here in the U.S., there is a great chance that they have international needs and they're going to be looking to someone to help solve those problems. And so I think if you're a data center operator, uh, I think there will be some acquisitions from either U.S. to European companies or European to U.S. companies uh, really trying to get more mature in Europe and Asia, uh, because that is those markets are just less mature than what's going on in the U.S. And you mentioned it earlier. That's why you're going to see capital, more capital spent in those areas over the next probably two to three years than here in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, it, just looking at a simple chart of the population of some of these Asian countries, it's easy to see yeah. that there will be a large amount of growth there. Because, yes. again, you know, I think human nature armchair analysis here is like people like being on the internet they like to do things on the internet and so yeah. we expect that to continue to grow yeah and you know 2020 has was just a another reason why you know connectivity and your ability to do things remotely is just 
it's the way of the world now. And it's, um, you have to be able to, if, if you're a business, you have to have a strategy around that. And if you don't, you're going to get caught flat footed. And I think a lot of companies were caught flat footed, you know, this, in, when the pandemic happened and uh, those companies, I would say like probably will not be caught flat footed again. And so I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out, Hey, how do we have an infrastructure that supports us when we need to be in the office or from home or a hybrid mix of the two. So, um, you know, again, to just to wrap it up, I mean, I think, uh, the fourth quarter ended on a really, you know, strong note. Uh, I believe 2021 will be a strong year, certainly the first couple of quarters. Uh, and you know, we'll see the rest of the year, but if there's one thing that I think I've learned is that in my experience watching this space, tracking it like we do is some of these challenges actually create opportunity, you know, better opportunities for our, for the in industry, because it just makes more people rely on their IT infrastructure, you know, the, the challenges that are created. So I think we'll see, you know, continuing um, growth from that in 2021. And, you know, we're like, we're excited to be in the space. We have some, uh, we didn't mention this, or maybe you're going to at the beginning, but we are, are now going to be covering uh, markets in Asia. So we are very excited to, I mean, we talk about, we're really expanding our footprint from a global perspective. And, um, and so, man, the U.S., what's happening in Europe, what's happening in Asia, it is an exciting time to be in our industry. Okay. Well, great thoughts as always, David. Yes. Appreciate it. Uh, excited happy about 2021. Yes. Yeah. Happy 2021 to all. And let's make this a great year let's better than 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like David mentioned, uh, if you go to datacenterhawk.com slash blog, we have a full write-up on Q4 2020, all the charts and graphs to your heart's content. And then again, of course, our insight tool where we go into even more detail on all those uh, trends. Again, capacity, pricing, supply, demand, et cetera. So check out datacenterhawk.com for more information there, and we will catch you next time.